I'm going to show you the insane potential of Lightroom's object selection mask with this tutorial. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump right into it. Of course, before we can start with the masking, we want to do the basic adjustments. So if you're just here for the tutorial, make sure to check the chapters. First, however, let's open up the basic panel. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, just to lessen the contrast a little bit. And this in turn gives me more control over the contrast. For this image, what I have in mind is I want to make it really dark and grim. So I'm going to start this by bringing down the exposure, always paying close attention to the histogram because we don't want to underexpose too badly. Right around here is a very good spot. We still have some details in the shadows while everything looks just super dark now. Of course, we don't want to make it too dark. So what I'm going to do as well is to bring up the shadows just to get out a little more details from the very darkest spots. I'm also going to bring up the blacks for the same reason. And also by doing this, I'm just introducing some more softness to this scene. I'm quite happy with the darks. You can also see on the histogram, it's nicely exposed without clipping. So that's great. However, I'm not that happy with the highlights. I want to push the contrast a little further by bringing up the whites. Just right around here. At the same time, I'm going to bring down the highlights. This will just prevent the very brightest spots from being kind of blown out. Now, once we have adjusted the exposure, I also want to work on the white balance. I want to, I want this whole scene to feel a lot colder. So I'm going to bring down the white balance temperature a notch. And I think there is a little bit of a green color cast going on. So I'm going to bring up the tint slightly to fix that. And that's it for the white balance adjustments. Also, I am going to bring up the texture, which will make the shot look a little bit sharper. And then at the same time, I want to have some glowing effect on top of everything, almost like an autumn glow effect. So I'm going to bring down the clarity and I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. Dropping the DS like this will also make the image brighter, just so you know. Okay, I'm not touching the vibrance or the saturation. So that's basically our image after the basic adjustments. We can compare it to before real quick and you can see it's a lot darker, a lot more grim. And that's exactly what I want for this scene. But you can also see the image is kind of looking a little bit flat. And at this point, here is where the object selection mask really can help improve this image. So let's go into the masking panel. And now I'm going to show you the reason why the object selection mask is slowly becoming my favorite masking tool. And let's start with something simple. I want to make this glacier right here going through the center a little more visible. You could try selecting it with, with a luminance range mask or a color range mask or maybe even the brush, but the selection won't be that precise. Instead, we can also use the objects selection mask. And very important, I most of the times don't use the brush select, but instead we want to use the rectangle select mode right here by clicking on this little icon. With the rectangle select, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle around that glacier right here. And just like that, we get a really, really good selection for it. Of course, it's not perfect, but we can still modify it by subtracting with a brush, for example. And I'm going to just take away this part from the side and maybe up in here as well. What I'm also going to do is to subtract a linear gradient to make this edge at the bottom softer. So I'm just going to take this out so this effect will fade into nothingness. To make the glacier brighter, let's deactivate the overlay for a moment. I am going to bring up the exposure. I'm also going to bring up the whites. Then let's bring up the saturation because I want the color of the glacier to pop. And I'm also going to bring up the clarity, which will really help to make it a lot more visible. All right, that's wonderful. And now you can see with just this one mask, we quite heavily improved the scene as we now have a clearer subject to look at. Although this is a super hard selection with the object selection mask, this was kind of easy to do. So right away, I want to go ahead and make this glacier even more visible. I'm going to do the same approach again using the object selection mask. I kind of want to target the back of the glacier like this. You can see again, it's working pretty good. I'm going to add another object selection mask because I want to have this band in the selection as well. 
and then we need to modify it using the brush. I'm just taking away this part which doesn't belong to the glacier. And again, we can make the ending a little softer, subtracting a linear gradient like this. Okay, and again, I'm going to make it brighter by bringing up the exposure. Then I do think I'm gonna bring down the highlights just in case. We don't want to clip in here, so that's just for our own safety. And I am going to further bring up the clarity. This always helps with areas like this. And I do think I want to make this a little colder by bringing down the temperature a notch. All right, that is looking wonderful. These two masks were pretty simple. Now let's do something more advanced. I want to create some light effect with the light hitting the mountains in the back, but I don't want this dark mountain in the foreground to become brighter. I'm going to start this with a radial gradient. I'm targeting the back of the landscape right here where the glacier ends. Let's make it a little bit bigger here, just like this. You can see we are overlapping this dark mountain in the foreground. We're going to subtract with the objects selection mask and again we're just going to draw a rectangle around that mountain. For the bottom part this worked really good but the top is still selected so let's tr give it another try subtracting another objects mask and let's target the upper part of this cliff right here. And just like this we have a perfect selection for this area. Again, we need to further modify, so let's subtract the brush and clean up this mask a bit. I'm also going to subtract the linear gradient once more because we want, don't want to have this hard edge in the foreground, but that's looking great. And now we can work on introducing light. And that's easily done by further bringing up the exposure. At this point, you can see the glacier is becoming a little bit too bright. So I'm going to bring down the highlights to prevent any weird clipping in here. Then I want to bring up the shadows, which also helps with the brightness of this area. And let's see if we can bring up the whites as well. All right, this is looking much better. Let me deactivate this mask to see the difference from before to after. As you can see, this mask adds a lot more depth to the image as we have created light behind the mountain in the center. So we can further make use of this. Let me create another radial gradient and I want to target the mountain in the back again without targeting the mountain in, the, in front of it. So this is looking like a good positioning. I'm going to subtract an objects mask, selecting all of that mountain in the foreground. And just like that, again, we have a perfect selection for the mountain in the distance. Again, we need to modify it, subtracting with the brush, cleaning up this mask in the foreground, and then we can work on creating more light in the distance. Again, we are going to do that by increasing the exposure. And just look how nicely this works. I'm also going to bring up the whites, kind of adding some heavy highlights in here. And let's bring up the clarity. All right, this is looking awesome. Of course, we can also work on the left side. There is a really big part of the left side, which is a little bit too dark for my taste. So I'm going to start with an objects selection mask and let's draw a rectangle around that mountain again in the back of the image. And again, you can see this is a really, really good selection as we don't target the mountain right here in front of the other mountain but we want to make things a little smoother. So I'm going to subject another linear gradient, taking away a part from the bottom, just like this. And then let's make this mountain brighter by bringing up the exposure. Let's also bring up the shadows. Let's bring up the whites. At this point, you can see the mountain does look a little bit strange. That's because the lack of contrast. We want to change that. So let's increase the contrast amount a bit. And what also helps, of course, is the clarity. So let's bring it up. Okay, looking good so far. I also want to target the mountain in the foreground on the left side. So I'm using another objects selection mask, draw a rectangle around that mountain. And as you can see, Lightroom is doing a great job selecting it. Again, we need to modify it a bit. I'm going to subtract this part. Let's make the feather of the brush set it to zero. And let's subtract with the linear gradient coming up from the bottom to have a softer edge here. 
How do we make it darker? I'm not going to drop the exposure because that would lead to underexposure and clipping in the darkest areas. That's not what we want. Instead, I'm going to bring down the whites, which will make the highlights of that mountain just a bit darker and overall give it a darker appearance. Perfect. All right, and I think I'm pretty happy with the outcome here. So let me turn off all these masks so we can get a better idea of what these have done. This is our base profile. And that's our image after the masking, thanks to the object's selection mask. So I hope you can understand why this mask has quickly become one of my new favorite tools in Lightroom, because you can create really, really complex selections, which you could otherwise not create. Of course, we are not done with the masking yet. I also want to work on the sky. Therefore, let me use a simple sky selection. I just want to pump up the contrast, making the clouds a little more dramatic. I'm also going to use clarity just to add some more structure to the clouds. And I think the saturation of the sky is a bit too much, so I'm going to bring it down as well. Okay, I do want to create another mask for the sky. This time I'm using a linear gradient targeting the very top like this. Of course, I only want to affect the sky, so we need to intersect here. So click on those three dots intersect mask with and choose select sky and then what i'm going to do is to further bring down the exposure kind of creating a vignetting effect leading the viewer's eye more towards the bottom of the image i want to make it really dramatic so i'm going to drop it quite heavily but this is looking good maybe adjust the linear gradient size a bit but i'm happy with that we could also work on the foreground so let me use a color range mask targeting the green tones of the foreground right here the range is a little bit too narrow, so I'm going to use the refine slider and bring it up a notch so we have more green tones selected in the foreground, just like this. And I'm going to subject a linear gradient, taking away the very near foreground. And I'm also going to subject with a brush, taking out all the green tones on the mountain faces in the back. All right, what I want to do in here is to just add some more exposure so we have something to look at in the foreground as well. I do think we can also bring up the highlights. Let's bring up the whites and let's add some clarity. And finally, I'm going to use a radial gradient covering this valley right here in the foreground. Uh, I just think it needs to be a little brighter. So what I'm doing here is to again bring up the exposure and let's also raise the shadows. All right, and that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks again to see the difference from before to after. Much better. Actually, I think I want to tone down the highlights in the foreground. They are kind of overwhelming here. So let's just bring it down a notch. All that's left to do is a little bit of color grading. So let's go into the color mixer. I want to work on the saturation first. I want to bring up the green saturation for the foreground. I also want to bring up the aqua saturation for the glacier. And let's maybe bring up the blue saturation, just introducing some more coldness. We can also work on the luminance to kind of work on the light situation of this image. Could make the foreground brighter, bringing up the yellow luminance a bit and the green luminance. But I really don't want to overdo it. So that should be enough. And finally, I'm going to Skip over the split toning. I don't think it's needed for this image, but what I want to do is to head into the calibration tab here. I want to bring down the blue primary hue and let's bring up the saturation. All right, that's it for the color grading. Then let's also sharpen the image in the details tab. As always, I'm using the same settings, bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up. Then we want to add some masking while holding down the alt key. So we can nicely target the important areas of the image just like this. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we're done. So that is the finished image. I hope this little masking tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.